Uh, I'd like to call the um, August meeting of the El Sobrante Municipal Library Council. This is a council which advises the Contra Costa County Board of Supervisors on issues in the uh, unincorporated area of El Sobrante. And um, Ronnie, can we start off with the roll call? Yes. Uh, Thomas Lang, <clears throat> George Cleveland. Let's excuse absence. Uh, Jim Herman. Tom. Okay. Dr. Melinda McLean. Huh? Yeah. Mickey Norris. Here. Tom Owens. Here. Randy Lloyd. He's in I'm here. Chat. I'm here. <laughs> and Terry Edlinger. Here. Awesome. <laughs> okay, uh, Ronnie. Well, why don't we do the Pledge of Allegiance? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Okay, Yep, so we're still spending at $2,091. And I'm still working on those badges and, and um, business cards. Right? Yeah, yeah. Any uh, next item, any issues, anybody see any issues with the uh, minutes from last month? I do. I guess this time we were attending and, and uh, it said CD Grove and it's on the was a member so that just needs to change the member and add Randy and add Terry to the office for the alternate card. Um, and the uh, present was not seen in July where we left. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so just that. everybody except the uh the the changes in the minutes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, vote to. Uh, I call the vote to um, approve the minutes. I'll start. Second. Okay. Hi. Okay. That's done. All right. So that takes us into our presentations. Probably uh, the county update. Mm -hmm. And he like operated those again. So TED Talk. <laughs> Starting with our noise ordinance and noise issues, our county planning has compiled the responses uh, received thus far from the noise survey sent out uh, this past June. And the uh, first task force meeting is tentatively scheduled for mid September. And residents that have signed up to participate should expect an update from county planning within the next few weeks. I see a train and it's left the station. <laughs> well, or it's at least got its engine running. Yes. And then members of the public as well. It'll be uh, us first. Yes. yes. Yeah. So talking now to the San Pablo uh, San Road bike lane, uh, the Board of Supervisors has approved and authorized public works to submit a saved streets and roads for all grant application to the U.S. Department of Transportation under the Infrastructure Investment Job and Jobs Act for San Pablo Dam Road. Uh, and that's for a new dedicated bike lane between Castro Ranch Road and Apian Way. And uh, public works anticipates the application results by the end of this month. Just uh, here's a little thing. Yeah. Maybe does public works know that Caltrans owns all those cameras? Ah, uh, that might be sure. interesting sure. for their grant proposal. Yeah. Because there might be data or reports about what happens on the damn road. Yeah. Yeah. I still haven't heard from CHP uh, on you know. Yeah, but all it's different. Apparently, that's his camera. Yeah. Yeah. Might yeah. be helpful for them to reach out and make a better grant application. Yes. Yeah. 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 
and uh, the modern pro property and proposed new park. Supervisor Joy, along with members of the citizens for Greener House of Running, met with the owners of the Mallory property on the site to review uh, opportunities for a new park. And the property owners have agreed in concept to apply for planning approval to build housing on the site and construct parking spaces where cars can be back in as part of the tar walk. Sure. And so they have essentially agreed to transfer a large portion of the site to the county for future county park. Supervisor Joy recently had a follow up meeting with the property owners and county planning and public works to discuss the development of the approval process, which should take about six to 18 months. And so the wheels are turning, but it's a bit of a process. So. <laughs> <laughs> and again, the train is visible in the station. Yes, yeah. yeah. You can see the steam and you can hear the sound. So it's, uh, you know, mm -hmm. slow, 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 but for sure the progress. <laughs> Uh, the August 31st collaborative dumpster day it will be happening from 8 a.m. until the dumpsters are full. And so Supervisor Joy's office will host a collaborative dumpster day with the city of Richmond and also uh, the East Richmond Heights uh, slash Hasbrook Heights community. And so the location for El Sobrante will be at the El Sobrante Christian School located at 5100 Argyle Road. And for more information, and if you'd like to sign up to volunteer, which we definitely will need, you can reach out to me directly and I can give you my information. Bit. And finally, the uh, Clark Road maintenance issue. <clears throat> Excuse me. East Bay Regional Park District staff have agreed to pay one third of the cost of a double chip seal repair for the portion of Clark Road that is currently unmaintained. And the county will then move forward with accepting the road for maintenance on an ongoing basis. <laughs> Currently, Public Works and the Park District staff are working together on an agreement uh, that includes who will actually do the work. Uh, that needs to go to the Park District Board either September or October. <laughs> <laughs> almost impractical issue that there was progress. Yeah. So, uh, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any any questions from the audience? Yeah. Yeah, I just wonder, uh, Ronnie, is there any update on a lot of wood hoarders for us, Ronnie? Yes, that was the first item. So the um, the first round of uh, task force meetings will happen mid-September. Okay. And so, uh, yeah, there have been about 19 or so folks in all the county that have uh, signed up to participate. So we should have follow-up within the next few weeks on okay. the actual date of what they should post. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, the survey uh, closed July 31st. Um, so she probably didn't get it because she went on the map yet. More than that, no, it's to all, all residents. Yeah, well, you'll send that to everyone that's on our newsletter and oh, okay. yeah, all that. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, it's going to be yeah. yeah, it's, it's, so it's too late to sign up for it. I'm leaning towards yes, but I can definitely double check to, to follow up. Yeah, because we did have it open for like three or four months, so we're just trying to you know get the ball moving as yeah. quickly as we can. Yes, yes. Did you bug your boss to? Um, he said you had to already sign up to be on to support this. Yeah. Now he's going to come and talk. We yeah. would love it. He like support it. Yeah. Support. You don't hear from him. He got it. He got an invitation to do that. He'll be here in the next week. Bug him. Yeah, we'll be here. 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 Thank you. We can always have the next item. John's the Jacks. Yeah. Any other questions for the county? Well, that's my, my question was about the board. Oh, yeah. So it's going to be for all unincorporated areas. Uh, yeah. And what's the, what, what's the purpose of the task force? So to just compile um, as much data and information uh, so that, you know, county, the uh, PCD can. Uh, go ahead and work on the expansion of the current ordinance that's in place. And so we're just trying to get as much uh, feedback from the community as possible so that we can make it just inclusive for everybody in the county. And the impetus 
to do that thing for this yeah. yeah. We're we're driving it, but sadly we have to bring a lot of other people with us. <laughs> and if if we don't make the cutoff to be included in that group, is there a way that our voice can be heard by the group? Well, we actually have the director for PCB that's on currently. Um, and so that's definitely a, a way to for your voice to be heard. Um John, I don't know if if, if the, the cutoff of the 31st is that a, a hard deadline or for the task force specifically? No, we're welcome to uh accept anybody else who wants to be on the task force anytime they want to let us know. I'm getting a lot of feedback. Sorry. Uh, but yeah, feel free to sign up anytime. Okay. And I think it's fine to complete the survey as well. Okay, so I'll make sure to put that on the newsletter that goes out this Friday. Um, so that, you know, if it's still a little way to wait because we're trying to do it. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll be sure to add you on that. Yeah, you're, you're okay. Right. All right, if there are no more I was questions. Wondering if, oh. You know, like they're asking about submitting, right? Because that um, he's John is going to give a uh, presentation about the noise ordinance, or how can they give us feedback before that meeting? The public the survey, yeah, yeah, oh. that would be through the survey, which I'll, I'll send out there. Oh, okay. yeah, so do you think maybe you just send it out to that email yeah. before we mail this? Yeah, I'm just going to leave last time. Take it the day to say you have it, yeah. <laughs> okay, any any more questions for uh, Ronnie? All right, in that case, thank you. And we go on to the next item, which is an update from the Fire Protection District. And I see Michelle Reinhardt, who is on Michelle? Hello, board. Can everyone hear me? Yeah, yeah. great. Great. <laughs> we can hear you, but we can't see you. It's, sorry about that. The um, Okay, so first off, uh, I'm joining you virtually because I'm coming from another meeting and I'm going to another meeting in 12 minutes. Um, so I have one thing to report to the board. You're stuck with me. So through the grace and allowance of the Board of Supervisors, who abort, who approved the uh, grant extension, you're stuck with me for the remainder of the year. Yay! <laughs> so I thank you very much for the cheers. I appreciate that. That makes me feel welcome. Um, um, Muting doesn't help in well, this case. There is we that go. better? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I don't know if that was me. Um, so uh, receiving approval from the board will keep me on through December 31st of this year. Uh, so I encourage some interaction with um, if you're interested in building a fireways community or building a project, whether you're a fireways community or not, um, please visit our website. Uh, cccfpd.org. Again, um, this is an opportunity for residents to drive fuel reduction projects uh, within your communities uh, to allow you to become more fire adapted. So I, I look forward to um, offering support to uh, sign in with no audio. Sorry. What was that? I'm sorry. Nothing. Okay. Uh, so I look forward to supporting uh, the development of projects uh, along with seeing that through completion. I, I want to understand the challenges that you face when interacting with the request portal and um, and hearing the success stories uh, as we complete our projects to reduce the fuels throughout the county. So again, I thank you for allowing me to join virtually tonight and I'm open to questions. Okay, uh, questions from the for Michelle. Yeah. Uh, okay. Bye. No questions. No questions. Okay, please. Um, I was, I was, I heard that you can't the developer is not bought the property on um, um, Dam Road where Lake Guard is. Are they going to put a multiplex in there? 
change and that would not be with the energy well over the view isn't there so i was just wondering you know you know just who's this sliding oh um, so this isn't this isn't related on the your protection doesn't well, work okay. well <laughs> so okay yeah, i don't know yeah, so of course, at the end of the meeting, we have to no, I don't want to the meeting. Yeah. Sorry, no, Chair, was that a question for Confire? I'm no, sorry, no. you're all the way okay. Um, mute all on okay. entry. Um, Thank and, you. Any, any, anything further, Michelle? No, that's it. I remain available by email and cell phone uh, for anyone who wishes to oh, no. communicate to me after the meeting. My cell number is 925-440-5831. I'm available by text, phone message, and email. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Michelle. Okay, take care. The uh, next item on the agenda is uh, the sheriff's office update, Lieutenant Holland from Bay Region. Hello, Lieutenant Thanks, Holland from Bay Station. Yeah, uh, so, you know, not one to be kind of by Ronnie a little bit. I also have the train in the in, in, in the station. In the station? Wait, you know, right? So we got the radar trailer, it's in our parking lot. Our CSOs are just waiting for the guy to move that operator to come down and train them. So either by the end of this week or next week, it will be out on the airport. Where will you be placing it? Uh, well, I had a few a uh, few suggestions from the last meeting, so we can start there. Or if there's another place that you guys have kind of thought of, we we can move it up and down as often as you want. Great. So, and uh, suggestions can just go to your email. Yes. 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 Well, that last suggestion that they had where it suddenly goes from like 40, it seems like the best place. Yeah. yeah. Right along in there somewhere. Yeah, somewhere where the trailer can be safe, not obstructed, but. And see. Yeah. yeah. That seemed that seems like the best place when we got to the end of it. Yeah, we can start that. And Castro Ranch Road, where I wrote, you know, Lake Ridge goes in. Yeah. That's where everything narrows. And when we try to go to the club, they go. Crap shoot out there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me see if they can. Uh, I, I gave them uh, a yeah. little yeah. date. Yeah. So, you said it until somebody else tries to take it from us, right? <laughs> <laughs> and and if long as we keep it deployed, we'll keep the park. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's lots of places we can yeah. deploy it. Yeah. 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 We'll help. <laughs> Uh, into the stats. So for the select crime, which are like the major major ones, uh, we had 11 last month, uh, as opposed to 10 the two previous months. So that included a residential burglary. We had one, and that was on the Yeah, I think the burglary was. Oh, the Harmon Road, and then we had a commercial burglary at the food stop on Danville. So those were the two burglaries that we had. Uh, we had some domestic violence issues. We had uh, some thefts from vehicles, a couple of them. Uh, one notably where the person lost about $12,000 in the stuff in their car. It was an unlocked car. And the survival stuff were in their backpack <laughs> on the front seat in the driveway. Oh, so please man. don't leave things on your car, lock your car. Uh, if somebody breaks into your car, well, the, so it, what makes it felony versus a misdemeanor is the value of the item stolen is one, mm -hmm. but also if you have your car unlocked and somebody goes into your car and say, Take something that's less than nine hundred and fifty dollars in value. That's a misdemeanor. But if they break a window, take that same item. Now it's a felony because now they're breaking and entering because they just opening up and then I lock it. But if they get twelve thousand bucks worth of stuff, that's a felony. That's a felony. <laughs> so, but just please keep your doors locked, even if it's in your driveway. Don't keep any valuables. Clearly, someone who's never lived in Oakland or San Francisco. I don't leave yeah, Kleenex I, in my car. You know, <laughs> not even Kleenex. 
please break in and steal my Kleenex. <laughs> yeah, I have a couple other uh, penny thefts from vehicles. Yeah. 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 I appreciate it. And those were all uh, Sweeney Fork and Double Drive, and they were not, they were spread up. So there wasn't like a, a rash of it. And it's, <clears throat> and they had a few stolen recovered cars, uh, stolen in other areas that were covered in here. Um, and that's pretty much it. And everybody likes to illegally dump in. Yeah. Come to pick up their friend. One was a U Haul truck that was occupied, so we made an arrest in that. Uh, it was a stolen U Haul. Any questions for Lieutenant Hall? Yeah, somebody was asking me uh, about what is allowed as far as people having businesses and at their homes that that's a, like a car repair because they, they have lots of cars parked out there and it's kind of a nuisance to them and and the people inside from them are kind of intimidating to them and they're afraid to even say anything because they've been threatened in the past. Right? Is there are people allowed to have those kinds of that would be more for uh, code enforcement okay. uh, and business see if they have a business license and what they're allowed through the county ordinances for code. Okay. Uh, I I would, but if you get threatened, then you should call. Yeah, absolutely. They threatens you. Yeah, yeah, that's different. Yeah. So the question is something right reporting to the DCD, the uh, reporting yeah. to the DCD, the uh, confidential. Is it? I don't know. I was just thinking. I don't think that that Department of Conservation and Development. I would think so. Yeah. 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 You gave him a call. There's a line where it says come up Yeah, cool. Yeah, okay. I would start there with something like that. Okay. But if they're if they're dumping hazardous waste in the gutter, things like that, then those are things we can do. Okay. Department of Conservation Our branch at DC. Well, they do so many things. Any further questions? Away in for a quick sec. So I'm John. I'm the director of the Department of Conservation and Development. Uh, and yes, that does sound like a code enforcement issue to report. And uh, you don't have to provide your name. Okay. Thank you. There you go. The head of DCD speaks. Mm -hmm. uh, it's perfect. Yes. Yeah. Second. Um, all right. So any further questions in that case? Uh, I think what we'll do is since we're waiting for uh, Supervisor Joya to show up, we'll move to discussion item D1. And then when we're done with that, uh, here's Supervisor Joya. Um, why don't we just quickly tackle item D1? So this is an applicant requesting approval. Lieutenant, thank you. Thank you. Even if we move it on to the next day, yeah, thank you. It's all right there. Thank you. 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 All right. Uh, so, this discussion. This is uh, application which is the twenty-four, And so, this is the new uh, Center for Elders Independence. Case center that's going up near the intersection of San Pablo Dan Road and El Portal on the uh, north side of San Pablo Dan Road that used to be, I'm trying to remember the name, used to be in Bricktown. Um, so they're requesting an administrative permit to install one internally illuminated channel letter sign that says Case Center. Um, what does that mean? It means they're going to put a sign. sign up. So what's an internal it's an internal illumination? It's a big lit sign. And, and it's like an LED type of sign. Yeah. It might be on the building or on the street. It doesn't say where. It doesn't say where. It doesn't say how big. 
Right. Or help. We actually, I, I had an email with one of the planners regarding this, these administrative approvals, and he said he, he was really surprised that we're getting them, and we shouldn't. They shouldn't really be coming across our desk. They don't, since they're administrative approvals, mm -hmm. they don't really require that sign up. Mm -hmm. So, at any rate, you know, I it's there. We it's there. We might as well. So I, I make a motion to approve their sign. I'll second. I'll second. Okay. <laughs> okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So uh, this one is approved. I just want to make the comment that a thousand dollar fee to put up a sign. Yeah. Seems like a lot of money. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm glad my signs were grandfathered in. So now we can backtrack to item P5. So this is the Contra Costa County Cannabis Permitting Policy. And so the Department of Conserv uh, Conservation Development, uh, John Kopchik and Supervisor Joya are both here. And the way this will be structured is we'll have them give a presentation on the um, how this how this came about and how the uh, how the businesses the permitted businesses were chosen and then what we'll do is we'll, we'll, zoom in. we'll follow it up with a discussion about with feedback from the community about how this policy is working out for people. So we just want to get, we've, we've had this in place for a few years now. So we just want to get a general sense of how it's working for people. So uh, Supervisor Joy, I don't know if you or oh, John. All right, and then I have John, you're on. There's John. There's John, I think I'm going to talk to you. John is the head of the Department of Conservation Development, so he oversees planning and building. He's the top guy uh, in the county overseeing that. So, well, thanks. Um, Hi, John. Hi, good to see you. It's been a busy day because I've been working, helping on this settlement between Richmond and Chevron, which is half a billion dollars, for, which helps us for, well, for Richmond and the, taking that. I had support, just to note, today, actually, the Richmond City Council approved a uh, settlement with Chevron. Uh, in exchange for removing the um, uh, the polluters pay tax on the ballot. I, I was a supporter of that initiative, uh, not initiative, but a measure, and it would have uh, taxed Chevron a um, dollar per barrel of oil. Wow. Um, and raised between <laughs> 60 to $80 million a year. Yeah. The tax. And, you know, measures always, you know, always a risk, whether they pass, an issue of litigation, Chevron was going to sue. And so there were some pretty quick settlement discussions um, that resulted in certainty to the city. So the city is receiving 50 million a year for the next five years, 60 million a year for five years after that. So basically an average of 55 million a year for the next 10 years under an agreement in exchange for Chevron agreeing not to challenge it and then pulling back on the, on the ballot measure. So the measure doesn't go forward. They, today was the last day to remove the measure. So the city will get 550 million new revenue from Chevron over the next 10 years. It's a pretty big deal. So the big thing is, a couple questions. Are there any constraints on how they spend it? And it goes to the general fund. Goes to the general so, fund. Uh, the city council. And any of it is, is any of it shared with the Unincorporated. No, I mean, the city budget. I mean, obviously, things they do out here in El Sobrante, right? Um, they do. Bill Kalen's good at ben, getting our ben, 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 benefits. So <laughs> it is a good thing. It's a good thing. Good thing. Yay. Yay. So uh, thanks for the opportunity to talk about uh, cannabis. And I was going to talk about the history of cannabis in the county and our regulatory procedure for that. So you know, back in 1996, Prop 215 permitted medical marijuana dispensaries, which allows uh, uh, for, for cannabis use with, um, with the doctor's authorization. Uh, if you're between 18, if you're under, if you don't use it, you know, applies to those 21 and above. 
if you're 18 and above, you can get medical marijuana. So there is a difference. But we had a hearing. On, I just want to put this out that we had a hearing um, at our um, board this week from our health department about we have a whole effort to try to educate uh, teenagers and young people about cannabis use because there's a lot of evidence that cannabis use in developing brains can impact, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so we um, um, we heard that not unrelated to, to all of this. But so anyway, so medical marijuana, 18 and above, with doctor's permission, adult use 21 and above. Back in 2007, uh, one plant opened uh, in, uh, in, in what was the retail business zoning district in El Sobrante. And at that time, our retail business zoning district didn't mention cannabis use, but it defined broad uses in which cannabis dispensaries were allowed. So uh, that was the only one that was established in the county incorporated area. And then two so that was all of Contra Costa. In all of Contra Costa, there was one and that was one. Uh, there was one plant. Um, I'm not aware of any. That's John, there were no other medical marijuana. There was another one in Pacheco since going out of business. When, when did they open? About the same time. Okay. And then they, when did they go out of business approximately? I don't know. A long time. Before uh, 2016. Uh, okay, so there was one other apparently, Pacheco, which is an unincorporated area. Um, and then in 2008, uh, because we had no regulations, we passed an ordinance prohibiting the establishment of medical marijuana dispensaries. So that grandfathered in any existing one. And so one plant was grandfathered in. What does that mean? When, when you change the zoning and something becomes a non-conforming use, that means that they can continue to operate, they have a right to continue to do what they've been doing, but they can't expand. They can't expand square footage, they can't expand their uses, they have to, but they have the legal right to maintain what they had prior to the zoning change. Then of course in 2016, Prop 64 passed, right? Um, allowing um, adult, adult use. Um, and um, so what we did in 2018, uh, we had in June of 2018, we adopted an ordinance, a law, right? Uh, that uh, it was a that set of process to permit and regulate adult use subject to voter approval of tax, which went on the ballot in November of 2018. And we had the voters pass a tax, which is what most jurisdictions did on adult cannabis use. And adult use and medical, um, 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 right, two different types of uses. But so this was adult use. Uh, we set forth a permitting process in, in 2018. And under that process, we did what we did, a little different than some jurisdictions, some others did, is we, we allowed not just we allow, we set forth the zoning areas that would allow uh, um, adult use. And for example, there were no zoning areas in Kansas City District. She did not want adult use in, in her district. So the, there were areas in North Richmond, El Sobrante, Chaco, Bay Point, areas like that, particular zoning districts that allowed it. Um, and the ordinance, so the ordinance <coughs> set forth that we would issue up to four permits in the unincorporated areas countywide for uh, adult use dispensaries. And it set forth an RFP process in the, in the law. So rather than just opening it up to anybody, we set up to four, we would select those four if they apply in the proper zoning district subject to a process. So it was specifically a request for a proposal. Um, and um, we received, I'll get to that here, we received 21, so we went through this process, uh, and in February of 2019, we issued an RFP uh, for prospective cannabis businesses, and we received 21 proposals uh, for retail, and, and then over a process that occurred through 2019, so our RFP was issued in February 2019, in December of 2019, after this long process of uh, public input scoring procedures, 
the county selected four cannabis retailers to apply uh, for a land use permit. Um, one was Artistry, Gary El Sobrante. One was Element 7 in Bay Point. One was Embark in Pacheco. And one was Authentic 95, also in Pacheco. Uh, in September 2020, after going through the process, we issued a land use permit for a facility in Pacheco. And in November 2020, we issued the land use permit for Artistry. You remember, it came here and we made the recommendations. Um, and then in January 2023, we issued a land use permit for another one in Pacheco, but they haven't opened yet. So we've issued permits for three. Uh, even if we wanted to issue a fourth, um, so that the entity that was invited would end up having to withdraw, and we would have to go back and do another RFP under the law as it is written today. If we change the law, which is an ordinance which takes time, we could change the process. But the process today is our is an RFP. Um, and then in 2023, uh, artists opened for business. Um, there was a there was a scoring ranking. Um, uh, of the 21, um, and um, um, basically the artistry was ranked second with uh, 1100. And the top rank was again, this, this these are all this, I have this score sheet, uh, was the entity in Pacheco at 1155 points. Artistry came in second at 1140 points. Um, one plant at the time was next to last at 960 points. So that was, and we sort of went by a lot of this. And the idea of the RFP was to get a, a, a reputable outfit that would be good for the community. Somebody who had, who had shown to run a good facility and we wanted a good proposal to community benefit and all of that. So it wasn't just anybody. And so that's how that process went. Um, and so and I'll have John add. So, Right now, and maybe I'll have John explain this part. Um, we, if you know, we're going to get an update to the board about how the process, an up, update about where we are and all of this. We haven't done this yet because we've been in the middle, as you know, of the general plan, which has taken up a lot of time. We are hoping to finish and adopt that general plan next month. And uh, after that, I think we, the planning department will have more time to come through with the review of the cannabis ordinance and where we're at. They say we, 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 the ordinance allows up to four, two are operating, third one has a permit, but isn't operating, and, and the fourth does, didn't get a permit yet. Um, and so the board can decide do we want to have more than four? Um, do we want to change any requirements? But the, all that's involved is a change of the ordinance. Um, and the medical marijuana facility that exists, which is now Urban Soil, which bought um, was sold, bought from uh, from one plant, um, can continue to operate as medical marijuana. It's a different current, different different regulatory structure, um, and I know we've been asked to issue a permit for that, but under our existing ordinance, we can't issue a permit to anybody else. Um, and if we enter the ordinance now, we have to do a kind of process. So, John, did you want to add anything? Did I miss something? No, I think you covered it well, Supervisor. Um, and um, I'm just looking at the notes you provided me. Um, so, the any idea when we're going to get an update to the board? I know we, the board wants to get an update soon. I know I've asked about this. You're focused on getting the general plan done. So, anything that you, um, when are you expected to have that come? Well, I would say at least three months out. Um, we we have to bring the general plan to the board twice. Once once to get direction on finalizing it, and then we have to finalize it. So I suspect it'll be later in the fall that we're done with that, and we'll have the and the same people working on that are yeah. our cannabis people. So. Um, yeah, I would hope uh, during the calendar year of 2024, that would be our goal. John, if we revoke the invitation to apply for a permit to the one that has not applied yet, one has not applied, right? Is that the one in Bay Point? They've applied. They just haven't been approved yet. Haven't been approved. 
Um, if, if even if we they withdrew, um, we couldn't rely on the RFP that was done uh, five years ago, like to, to any of the ones from five years ago to issue a permit. Is that correct? I I would strongly recommend against relying on the five year old RFP. Correct. We probably would have to do another RFP process. Yes. Or if the board decided to not do an RFP and to change the process, it would be to amend. So we have the ordinance that for RFP, we went through the process, invited for two are operating. Um, one hasn't got the permit, and the one that the third one that got a permit is not operating or didn't open. Correct. Okay. Hasn't hasn't opened yet. So yeah, that's sort of the nutshell. We can answer questions if you want at this point. Okay. Yeah. So what I was thinking is you could do sort of two things. First, just questions about your presentation. Sure. And then we could go to our audience and just get their feedback, sure. personal feedback on how the process is working for them. Okay. Seem reasonable. Can I just correct something real quick? Sure. So in 2007, the medical marijuana permit or license was issued to Buzz, not one plant. One plant didn't come into the picture, which one plant is another corporation that works on artistry. They have multiple licenses throughout the um, throughout yeah. country. Yeah. So it was actually a local veteran who started this, um, who founded this license prior to, one, prior to one plant in 2007. It was also very instrumental in getting the first cannabis ordinance in Texas. Yeah, yeah, but no, like Mary said, Medical Marijuana Collective, which later became, was issued in 2007, which later became one plant. And, so, yeah. And like 2022. And when did it become one plant? Like 2021, 2020. Okay. They only uh, lasted for a year. Yeah. <laughs> but, but the right, so the, the land use right to that operation is uh, extends to that. Operation in that facility, whoever owns it. So it runs with the land. And so they can continue medical marijuana there, uh, and that runs with the land. As long as it's medical marijuana. Yeah. Not something else. Right. So I, I have a question for you. Suppose that there were a general consensus all throughout the county that the current policy were not was not serving people well. You know, either in terms and, which, of, and what do you mean by that? Because well, look, look, let's say, for example, not enough access right. to marijuana, right. um, issues with pricing, mm -hmm. um, issues with clashes with yeah. neighborhoods, et cetera, the whole range of issues that we see with right. businesses. <laughs> so suppose that there was sort of this is hypothetical, there was discontent yeah. widely about it throughout the county. Mm -hmm. As I understand it, the Board of Supervisors would probably do kind of an administrative level of investigation compiling data and then follow that up with a vote on changing the ordinance. Is that? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll start first. So remember, we are only a small slice because many cities have the dispensaries under their ordinance. Richmond's got, I don't know how many Richmond has. <laughs> Great. They permit it. They don't have. They 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 allow more than three. Right. Just retail. So right. they haven't decided. Right. There's the equity program. Are you familiar with yeah. that? May lead to an additional uh, retail license. So they have three. El Cerrito's got what one or two. 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 Three and. Right. So uh, there are cities all around the county. Some of them have it. I don't. I don't know how many. So we're going to get a report from planning about the ordinance and a review sometime in the next few years. And will that, or, will that review take into account um, opinion from the community? Well, John, what were you thinking of doing? And I will say, it will be up to the five members of the Board of Supervisors to decide, do we want to change the process? Do we want to uh, go back out with an RFP to issue, you know, potentially two more within the four? Do we want to raise? Here's the thing. Not changing the ordinance. Anything we do under the existing ordinance means we don't have to change the ordinance. So let's hypothetically say there's only two operating and and, and the other two get withdrawn or revoked or not revoked, but the one that has a permit, you know, doesn't pursue it. 
that one's revoked and the other one that never pursued it. And then we just we decide to issue two more within the four. We would still under the ordinance have to do an RFP, a new RFP. So we that that would be what so yeah, request a proposal, this public process. So we could, without changing the ordinance, assuming these two back out, issue two more to an RFP process. If we decide to say, well, we want to issue more than four, we want to do an RFP to issue four more, we'd have to change the ordinance. Or if we wanted to do it without an RFP, we'd have to also change the ordinance. And so so anyway, those are the which go through the planning commission and all of that. John, did you want to add anything about the, the presentation you're gonna make? No, I'm I mean one reason we can't can't do it right away is we have to prepare for and decide what kind of information is are we able to present i think we would we would not do a community survey i don't think that would be outside the scope of what we can do i think we would report on the permitting what you know how many businesses have been permitted what kind of complaints we've had what kind of complaints we haven't had um and you know maybe how many have been permitted in neighboring cities and and yeah. And I think we come back with base what's going on in the cities too, because it's relevant. Because if you think about, it, you live in Richmond, you know your options are Richmond, El Cerrito, uh, El Cerrito. So it's all we're going to look at all. Yeah. Any yeah, okay. Anything else, John? You you're muted. Just take yourself off mute. Am I, I, I should be unmuted right now. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think what I just summarized. Would... You're going in and out. John. Well, I, I have, I'm there's connected twice. John, you're going in and out. Uh, there's a, there's I think a delay. there's a little lag. His sound is on his phone. And he's can you hear me now, supervisor? Yes, we can. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly right. My my computer sound is not working as well as my phone's, so I'm that's why I'm on twice. I, I think I just outlined what would be the core of our our report. Uh, it would be kind of a support: how many businesses uh, applied, how many um, have opened, any information. We do have some information on like their their revenues because we have community benefit agreements, so we would include that um, and complaints we've received and information on city permitting and those types of things. Yeah. Um, how many people live in the unincorporated part of the town? Uh, about 180,000 people live in the unincorporated area. Okay. Uh, and John, what unincorporated areas have the zoning which allows for tenants? The ones that you listed, so um, El Sobrani, Pacheco, Bay Point are, are some of the key ones. I think there are a few others as well. Clyde. Um, North Richmond is too, I think. North Richmond may have the zoning, but there's, there's setbacks from schools and things. And so I think North Richmond may have, there may not, the commercial districts of North Richmond may not be eligible, but I'd have to confirm yeah. that. Right. So, but mind you, yeah. And then there was none in, in Supervisor Anderson's district because she didn't want any. Uh, all the other supervisors were open to it. Um, I don't know if Rodeo has any uh, allowed any, but out here you have El Sobrante. And because of the setbacks, you're right, North Richmond doesn't have any. And plus, some of these unincorporated areas don't have zoning districts uh, that may allow. Okay. Yeah. So it's got to be at least a few more. What is the zoning, John? There are various the both just be one and also can you, um, can you get off maybe your your headphones because I'm wondering if that's the issue because it, it, it's it's you're coming in um, um you're coming in and out you were doing well at the beginning I'm sorry my I'm get yeah I'm getting I don't usually work from home so I'm not used to doing this and my uh, internet <laughs> I'm getting internet unstable. So okay. I'm going to try moving to a different part of my house. Does okay. that sound better? Oh, yeah. What's, what's the zoning district? 
there are multiple zoning districts that are eligible for cannabis retail storefront. Um, but some of the, the area wide P ones such as you have in El Sobrani are eligible, but so are commercial um, zoning districts as well. Is, is Embark one of the ones that are eligible? Uh, yeah, Embark, let me look here. Uh, I have my note is um, uh, Embark, yes, uh, wait, uh, yes, Embark is operating in Pacheco, correct? <laughs> Just, oh no, Embark has not no. yet opened. Oh. Embark has not yet opened. Authentic 925 is operating in Pacheco. Embark has a permit but hasn't yet opened. Mm -hmm. So they haven't made any decisions. They may move forward and open or they may not. And then the one that uh the one that um uh the fly would never complete the process was element seven in May. I just want to give an FYI about Embark. Mm -hmm. That they um, they were the ones that were operating at the California State Fair this year. Mm -hmm. That they had they sold cannabis at the state fair and also ran a consumption room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they have not opened. I, I'm not sure. Is that the one, John? <laughs> it, it may be looking at trying to look for a different location. I love the California State Fair. Yeah. I'm not sure where they stand. Embark also operates a retail storefront in the city of Martinez. But the one in Pacheco, they have not opened yet. Okay. Okay. So, other questions? Yes. It is Well, I think what we'll do is just have a few questions from the council and then we'll go. Are there any more questions from the council? Any more questions for the council? At this point, no. Okay, please. I it just I need to put a human face to this whole situation and cannabis. Cannabis is the legality of it is a social policy issue. It's not about consumption, it's not about getting high. It's about what our elected officials want. All I hear about is diversity, equity, and inclusion. In Richmond, now you have the social, Canada Social Equity Program, which I helped facilitate um, for them to, to get in. I can tell my issues about equity um, programs for candidates because I think they don't work. But everyone is talking about element seven, one plant. Artist Tree, those are all corporations that have multiple licenses and they can afford to go anywhere that they want to. I am from here. I never would have gotten an opportunity to acquire a campus license under this current, um, this current, all the current regulations and zoning and we're grandfathered in. The average cost of Entering the cannabis industry is $1.5 million. It was a low threshold to acquire a medical license. The oldest in the county. We are the first black owned in Contra Costa County. Black only accounts for 2% ownership throughout the whole state. So we can sit here and talk about. Me only being grandfathered in, which I think that wellness and access on cannabis, those should be everybody's core value when they enter into this kind of industry. Unfortunately, it's not that. It is very, very competitive. There's not one mom and pop shop, cannabis shop anywhere throughout Contra Costa County or North in Humble County. We don't exist anymore. And the reason why we don't exist is because of the competitiveness of the RFP, the cost of entering into the business. Now, I have, anybody who's been into the shop, you've met my husband, you've met my nephews, even probably bumped into my nieces. That's how we are able to keep our doors open. But to say that we can't expand our services, when I acquired the license, it was the conservation department that required me to get an updated site design where we had to go from the grandfathered in structure, which was self-service, 
to do a whole updated design where I had to go and get an architect. I have to get a health permit. I paid, I paid for the first one in February, which was $4,000. It was almost $600 for the application and over $3,000 for the permit. Well, the permit is due every June. So I paid in February and then I just had to pay this past June. And then because of the site design requirement, I had to update all the security doors at the amount of $7,000. $7,000 per day. The last one just went in today. So I'm being told that I can't expand and I can't move into adult use so I can increase access to the community because they're just running right over to the smoke shop. And they're getting mushrooms, cannabis. Everybody knows it. It's an open secret. Well, just so you know, for transparency, I've had them inspected. There have been some violations. I don't know if it's cannabis related. John, your department's looked at that. We, so I know that, you know, if, if they violate things, they will shut down. They will be shut down. Uh, the county went in and did an inspection uh, on that. Yeah, and I've been open since March, and I've been inspected twice by the state and also by the health department. Um, so that's neither here nor there. But I am set to remove everything. Just imagine everyone in here has had a dream. Everyone in here has had, you know, the wish and the desire to probably own and operate their own business. And my family is no different. I was born and raised here. I serve my community. We focus on seniors and veterans. We talk about community benefits. We do that organically, it just happens. So to be told that there is no way that I can compete fairly with a corporation that probably shouldn't have been invited into this area to begin with. I have an issue with that. And do we shut our doors? Because we cannot exist with just having medical. So it's totally different from what it was that you, if you guys have ever gone in and get your medical recommendation, you used to have to go and see a doctor face to face. And you would have to bring something from your primary care doctor. Today, you don't. You just go online. You put in medical recommendations, you pick out whichever one is the cheapest, and you sign a questionnaire. That's it. And the other issue that I have with it is that it does allow people who are between the ages of 18 and 20 to come in. I've had four of those. I feel that they have to come in with their parent because what a medical allows you to do is to buy up to three ounces at a time and 28 grams of concentrate, that is not responsible. And I wouldn't be a responsible owner if I allowed that to happen. Although we are committed to operating under the medicinal requirements, in order for us to stay open and to compete, we need a adult use. I would respect the county a lot better if you guys would tell me to close. Because I'm tired. Usually my energy level is way up. But I'm tired. And when Steve and I first started trying to accomplish our dreams of ownership and and you know and creating our own equity, which is what we have to do, um, we envisioned me staying at work. Um, in my nice job as an analyst for the, the county and the homeless health and housing department. But I was fired three days before my probation was up because I released on my form 700 that I had owned a cannabis lab. And the director was all too happy to just fly me a letter three days before my probation was up. So this is real life for me. I don't have a corporation backing me. I'm not a member of any type of fraternal order that can come and march down here and, and help support. I am just someone who is from the community who's trying to make it. And 
unfortunately, I thought that, oh, okay, if I build it, everybody would just be so happy that someone local from the community who is an upstanding citizen, who employs their family members, created an opportunity and didn't ask for anything to get started. Every permit you all have asked me to do, I paid for it, despite the box, which actually made it to where we qualify to operate under adult use. And it's pending with the state. Our, our form to expand our services are, are, are uh, pending. There, there are no rules that are in place. The county had more than 15 years to write rules that would govern a grandfathered in. So the ranch, bar, liquor store, they can expand into a nightclub, a karaoke club, and they're grandfathered in. But because they're CPT, they're traditional use permits for a liquor store. So I need to uh, correct respect everything you said. I need to correct one thing as a former land use lawyer, if I'm correct. There's a pretty good body of law about what grandfathered entities can do. And then well established under California law. And I know John can add. Um, and, but the basic rule is they can continue to operate their existing use, they cannot expand it. And the ordinance is very clear. I mean, even if we like said, hey, we want you, we want to give you an adult permit, I'd be breaking the law. We can't give you a permit unless we go through an RFP process under the ordinance to unless two entities withdraw and we go through an RFP process under the ordinance, or we amend the ordinance and say we want to change our rules to do it differently. But both of those will take. I, you know, I, I, and my colleagues on the board, it takes three votes on the board to change our law and to an issue of current. Okay, so and I, and anyway, but I, I, I want to say I acknowledge and respect everything you said about being local and equity. I acknowledge all that. But whether one plant was a corporation, whether you're a corporation or individually owned, I know that the law treats them all the same way, right? The, the ordinance treats everybody in that same way. Okay, so same this is what we can do. Waive my fees for the health permit that you have to get because I've already paid eight thousand dollars for twenty thousand dollars this year. Waive that, supplement my rent because I'm paying fifty five hundred dollars to a slum board who won't fix anything. I just had to fix the plumbing. I have to pay for all of the pest control. Doctor nurse, so thinking about these are some specific issues that could be. You know, dealt with in detail with Supervisor Julia's office. I think the focus of this discussion is the policy and how it's working out for people. You could just, let me just, can I finish my thoughts? Sure. Um, so we've had really good input from you on what this policy means to you as a family and as a business and how it's affecting you personally, how you feel that, you know, your situation is impacting the welfare of the community as a whole. And thank you for that. Like John said, I respect everything you said. Um, we'd like to get some other input as well from, from the both the council and the community. And I think Melinda has a question. Well, first, I just want to say, as someone who's in a, still in the process of opening a business, I really feel for you and all the, that's why I said a thousand bucks per sign it's expensive, it's difficult, it's challenging. Um, we we tried that grandfather thing because part of our business is a pre plant nursery that did fly. But they were very clear at the time in saying, well, it's partially continued use, but it's also really a different use. So my question to you is, you just said that DCB and um, the health department required you to make a whole bunch of upgrades that in that process did anyone say oh and by the way that you're really only going to be able to do medical marijuana they didn't explain this RFP thing that john explained today no actually it was the contrary they were like everything was in oh the gray area we don't know the way this started i wasn't even going to challenge this until 
um, our renewal came up, which was insane. Right, so when you bought the facility, you knew it was medical marijuana, which is why the license cost less to buy, right? Mm -hmm. um, well, they didn't buy the license when I bought it. They purchased that license for over two million dollars. Well, right. no, no, but what I mean is, you know, you've obviously had a lot of contact with DCB. Right. And it's clearly there's this whole process. And I'm just asking the question, did they tell you, oh, by the way, you're not going to be able to do this because it's literally not legal under current ordinances? No, they actually made an upgrade. Well, Jeez. that's what I'm trying to figure out. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if John's on. I don't know what your process is, John. You may not be aware of this or not. Do you it's, want to comment it's, about it's like a my, my My comment is, I. well, pardon me. Uh, I'm not aware of DCD requiring any improvements. We don't have a permit um, for for that business because it was established before we required a permit. Yeah, I had, they required me to get an updated site design, so I had to hire an architect. Not the health department or DCD? It was DCD because we had submitted an application to do an updated land use approval. But we were told that they weren't accepting the application at the time. So, so we were told to go from because it, it used to be yeah, self charge. Yeah, it used well, to be self service. So we were told that we couldn't do that anymore. We were also right. told that we had to put in right. an additional five cameras and expand our DVR system, which increased our security. Um, and then it was the issue of the door not being fixed. Right. So one plan obviously knew. And you bought from one plan and they informed you it was medical marijuana. I will say, in full transparency, John, you may not like me saying this. <laughs> one plant, we believe, violates, the county didn't come down on them. The county, they went in and expanded their square footage, didn't get a building permit, didn't get a planning permit. Wow. The county could have gone in. And shut them down. And maybe shut. Yeah. I, I, I don't know, John. You know, the county, I, I don't know the situation now, but remember what I said earlier land use permit, this is before you bought them. Land use permit, I mean, the grandfathered in allows you to operate your existing facility. I did go by there, I talked to them over here, then they expanded. Illegal. With illegal. I don't know what the status is now. The county is not, doesn't go around. Trying to police all of this. Um, but you know, I think they clearly knew the requirements. And and so and I, I, I don't know what the issue is about about the uh, we call it the um, about the inquiry. John, you're unaware. Yeah, I don't know why the county would require some unless unless they were requiring them to come up to building code standards. I, I don't know if that's what that was about, but there would be no requirements under the law because there was no permit, no permit, right? So I don't know, John, would you, what would, you know, you're unaware DCD required any, any permit, any alterations of the property? Certainly not for, I don't know if a building permit was sought from us for some improvements, but we, we have not, um, We've not um, been involved in any permitting activity for cannabis and so would not have required any improvements in that regard. And I don't really want to say too much more about the um, the evidence we've received about expansion of one plant prior to 2018, but it did it was reflected in the scoring of uh, one plant during the RFP process. So, I, so anyway, that just wanted to Okay, um, so just are we done with questions from the council and we go to John? Okay, uh, who would like to weigh in, Chris? I two, two things. One is that I, you might be thinking, is this Department of Cannabis Control requirements or something? That might be that they, state yeah. came in, they were up there all of 20 minutes and said that we were doing a, a great job considering. Um, the background that we have, and they let us know that our state application to expand is a pending, but it's based off of the county. And again, you know, I don't want to hear anyone from any elected official from the county when they talk about cannabis to use restorative justice, 
diversity, equity, and inclusion, any form of equity as it relates to cannabis and what the county is trying to do. Because to me, the two are not meshing at all. At all. And yes, I knew that this was medical. This was the first dispensary I went into 15 years ago. I know it's medical, but the whole cannabis industry has changed since we had medicinal. As soon as recreational went into play, nobody wants to sign up for a medical recommendation anymore unless they want to hire um, THC content, which that's the only way that I'll do it. And they have to go through a certain process in addition to dealing with me first. But it's creating a situation where it is unfair competition. I kind of moved away from my script one of this particular well. You said it's not the state of county, I understand that. Well, what I was going to say is it sounds like there's a, a marketing issue here, which makes me wonder are there any restrictions on how a, how a uh, medical dispensary can advertise or something like that, Sean? So it seems to me like, you know, maybe what, what you need to do is get customers in there. Yeah. Right. They need to differentiate how, what the advantages are going to do, the ease of getting people in there, and let people know about it. You know, so in January, like, yeah. I'm still thinking like next door or something, you can promote stuff that way. And... In, in January, a law passed where cannabis establishments can no longer advertise on social media. We can't afford to get 50 to 100 different numbers like our competitors do to send out text messages about sales. We can't even post it on our website. If we put it on next door, they take it down. The workaround is being able to have a company come in and send out alerts and change the number when it gets shut down. That sounds like a serious first amendment issue. I'm, I'm, yeah. it, I'm not aware of this law. I don't, county doesn't restrict any of this. This sounds like it's not. Okay. County doesn't affect personal advertising. I don't know. You're pretty informed. I don't know about the state law. Do you know about state law? That, that I'm just billboards going under. They're not allowed to have billboards. You can have billboards. You can advertise. Well, I'm, 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 you can advertise. Okay, okay. 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 You can advertise. I see cannabis ads all over. I don't You'll see. We had our some of that beauty shop last night. People looked at the right side. I don't know what you're saying. Yes. Exactly. Thank you. I will say, I mean, one comment. When, when the RFP responses came in, you know, my hope was, geez, this is what one plan applied. And we already had this one in El Sobrante. And it'd be nice if they were the one that we could permit for adults and they've been operating. Um, but their proposal came in so terribly ranked. And artists came in with a very good proposal that we wanted to make sure, you know, you were here when we did to make sure that we got the best facility for the community. We knew that one plan would continue. We also probably knew that that was going to become more challenging for them in competition once the new facility opens. I mean, look, I've heard from people in El Sobrano who say, we only want one facility. I've heard people say more facilities or none. So, I mean, I, so, but, you know, anyway, that was, so. so what I'd like to just follow up with now, Scott, if anybody here could weigh in, um, we've had great weigh in from a business owner. And uh, I'd like to know just from the point of view of neighbors, like if you use marijuana, is it hard to get hold of it? Is it too expensive? If you're a neighbor of a facility, are there problems like parking and traffic or customer behavior or whatever that cause issues? I mean, I just would like to hear feedback from the neighborhood regarding the way things currently are in our environment in terms of uh, adult marijuana dispensaries. I just think, I just think that I think they, they're the same. They're, they're, um, they're fair. They're well informed. It's a good rule system to have. Thank you. Any does anybody else want to weigh in on their experience or views as a yeah neighbor? Yeah, kind of a ballpark. You know, I stopped smoking weed in 1972. You know, <laughs> and it wasn't for me. Uh, but you know, driving around, you know, El Sprante, I've seen people selling out of their cars, plants, 
And I wonder, is, is that impact? Or? I haven't heard a lot of complaints about that. But we can use more especially and I would like to see if you're going to use one. I understand the bombs you running but you have to my client would be yeah let them be I'm just surprised that, that it's so restrictive right yeah, I'm, I'm just surprised that it's so restricted. And uh, my question was going to be to John, your close solver. Um, what has to change uh, so that this business isn't so, I mean, the wrongly accused of being whatever, horrible, sinful, whatever it is that seems to get the community into uh, this, this, I don't know even how to describe it. Being. Oh, boy. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think, well, you know, as you know, every city, I think marijuana cannabis is clearly, you know, public support and accepted. Every jurisdiction is treated it differently. Some cities don't allow it, right? And I respect, like, the North Richmond, uh, and their municipal advisory council absolutely did not want to dispense free in North Richmond. You know, there's a cultivation. They didn't want to dispense free. So we respected that request, right? But the tree didn't want it. They dealt with lots of other issues going on in North Richmond. And um, uh, other communities, you know, like Elsa Brown, they were more open and big and Chaco and so forth. Um, I, and ultimately, I think the policy call for us is do we want to expand also more than four? What's interesting is we, you know, we, we, we allow four, only two of them are open to it. Yeah, and, and others have not. I mean, it may very well be the unincorporated areas aren't always the best areas, and more of the lean cities because there's that's more geographic. We're one point two million people, you know, millions of them live in cities, under two hundred thousand live in the unincorporated areas. So, I mean, I was there were some of my colleagues who wanted less or not. I was supportive of having four more, and but that was the compromise before. Um, I do think we. My personal view is we should figure out what happens with these two and if they, we're, not, we're not using the two slot then we should yeah. open that up again yeah i mean it's going to yeah. take a vote of the board to do that yeah um i mean and, and one of them may have to give up a license and the other i mean john can comment john what would be the process on those other two that we what? then any two would not be under the or it would be it would be consistent with the ordinance but we would have to do some kind of rfp process um, right. Then we and we could create an equity program. So we've established uh, some racial equity and social justice, and we allocated seven million dollars for an African American wellness center in this county. I don't know, other than Allegheny County, I know nobody else has put that amount of money for that kind of center. And um, it's probably going to be in Antioch, which may be set up elsewhere because a lot of the issues in that county be in Antioch. But um, you know, we could look at an equity program. All of that would have to be developed. Um, and but let me just say we we'd have to start with the process of getting rid of the two that were invited or have a permit and and then have to go out and do another process. Um I I do agree, let me just say, having an RFP, I supported that. I, I would support an equity program too. But I I just what we heard from residents is we just didn't want to open it up to anyone. And having an RFP allowed us to vet mm -hmm. folks, especially this was the first time in our county, that's where our board was. So we would probably still work. And again, we can do two more, presumably without any of the ordinance. John, what would be the process for those two? We would have to conduct a public hearing to determine if we have cause to revoke their vested rights to either their permit or their invitation to a permit. And yet, remember, this is a due process situation. They have some vested rights. Uh, just like, frankly, if if um, um, 
you know, all these entities that apply, right? Oh, that was five years ago, and they have some rights, but that's what we have to do. Um, and what, what's your sense of those two, John? I mean, one of them has their permit, they just haven't gone forward. They probably would say they need more time and you wouldn't be able to revoke them. Oh, or they're stuck in development. No, that, no, no. that, that's what it is. What the building no, 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 no. They, yeah. what's, John, why don't you shed some light on them, on those two? Well, we're not necessarily privy to their internal planning, et cetera. One of them has a land use permit, spent a lot of time and money to get that permit, hasn't opened. Uh, I'm not 100% familiar with why not, but I suspect they're having some challenges, either financial or otherwise. And then the I, I, other one. Has anything to do with the county? Because they reached out. I think it's an internal issue to them. Okay. And then the other one, John? That, the, uh, the other one is even harder to build because it was the cannabis store in Bay Point was contingent on building an affordable housing project to go along with it. And so they're trying to do two things at once. And so that's been challenging. <laughs> Well, I would be in favor of expanding the number. I mean, if you look at the numbers, 180,000 people in unincorporated, that's about 25,000 people for, for the extension. Although that might be meaningless. <laughs> if it's an RFP process, how would a small shop like ours compete with? Let me just be really clear. Small shops can compete with a good application. You don't need to have a lot of money. And one plant didn't do well because they, let, let's be honest, one plant did not submit a good proposal, however you cut it. So it's not you. Know. Right? <laughs> it's, it, but so and but, the, the categories were things like the location, business and operating plan, security plan, sustainability, community economic benefit, equitable geographic distribution. So, and I think we can make sure that look, we do our fees all the time. Right. Yeah, it, we, we, let, me, let, me, let me be honest. We do our fees all the time, and we we have minorities, small owned women businesses win proposals all the time. So so but I want to be on so we can make sure that this this RFP is inclusive. So I think you're making a big assumption by saying you, you can't compete. Yes, we make sure an RFP you can compete. Because before I got into the 10 years of being a cannabis policy yeah. analyst, I consult for most of those firms who did the top five. Right. They're all the same. It's a template. The operation plan, the security plan, there is nothing special that stands out. And then your community benefits requirement is not enforceable. Well, that, that's not true. We have an agreement in place. It's legally binding. I was a lawyer, legally binding. Mm -hmm. I've done those contracts, or not contracts, but those licenses and the proposals. There's nothing different about it. They're all carbon copy. I don't know what one plant did. I am not associated with right. one plant, but I do know this industry, and I do know that it is weighted against people who don't have backing by a major corporation. We don't have the money to host the party that the elected officials go to. There was no, you know, there was no, no party. Let me be really clear because I don't want an accuracy. There was no party held for this. We did not do the rankings. It was done by particular folks in on staff and presented to us. There was no party, period, end of story. It, how it was ranked. So I want to make sure. Let, yeah, me, make sure. Yeah. Let, me, let me say one other thing. Okay. We can design an RFP that ensures that small businesses can come in. We yeah. do this all the time. And I think we, we, we could do that to ensure. Um, and I think your input's helpful and good. But so I, I take that as good input that we could design an RFP that makes sure that small businesses have a, an equal op, equal sort of equitable opportunity to compete. Yeah, Not right. requiring people to split up money. So we is actually yeah. the yeah. So I, I'm yeah. in favor of what you just yeah. suggested. And which I'll, is what, make sure I understand. No, which was saying that you can develop an RFP yeah. that, that small businesses, in, right. It, yeah. Right. So look, no yeah, party, no look fair, at the no official. We didn't go to any parties. John didn't go to any parties. I just want to clarify that. Yeah. And uh, 
I just want to say one thing about the artist. Yeah, you can go to any party you recommended them, right? One thing about the artist, I think it looks like the nicest business you have in Los Angeles. You have your moment, have the moment. Mm -hmm. What are we talking about? No, it's just when you drive by on the street. No, we do. Aesthetically, it, it, it looks like, you know, and. And inside is way too. And is it? It's like, uh, so I don't want to diss it's the truly, artistry, and you know, but I, yeah. you know, I'd like to give you a leg up as well. And it seems to me like maybe there should be a deadline for these businesses that are sitting on these permits that, was my point. that are not that are just you know like yeah. taking their time that they they should right. be like go oh, either do something. Let's not about that. That's a good question. Yeah, I have a question first to talk. I want to and what so what John? What's your sense on timing and setting? You're right. I mean, they they're taking up these. These slots. What, what's your sense? I mean, remember they all have good lawyers, and they could also argue in process issues. So, what, what, what's the, um, what's your sense on the timing? I think the the timing is a factor that the county could consider when determining whether it has adequate basis to revoke their vesting rights. Right. And and that was in my roadmap email, my initial email to the county. That was one of the two things that could be done. Was putting a limit or a time limit yeah. on the two that are still open and then the equity program because we don't have one. But all of those things sound really good. But while we're doing that, my new payment is due on the first. I still haven't gotten my whole permit, although we paid for it. I don't know what the holdout is on that. When I have an average of probably five to ten customers a day. So my operating cost is seventeen thousand dollars a month. Yeah, I think it's kind of smart. A, ge a general question. So when you go into the expenses required for, let's say, a business to enter into, you know, a family business or a corporation or whatever to enter into this uh, adult use marijuana market, what proportion of the costs are sort of regulation imposed? versus just the costs of commercial operations. Uh, John, can you address that? I'm not an expert in the cannabis industry, so I don't know what percentage are regulation induced and which protection, which aren't. It is a heavily regulated industry, so I suspect that the cost of complying with particularly state regulations, but also county regulations is higher than for an un, you know, a, a business that's not nearly so regulated like a clothing store. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, 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 even without cannabis, it cost me a hundred grand in fees to start a business. So I can tell you that, and that's without cannabis on top of it. So if you want to talk about bills, I can show you some bills. <laughs> and, and John, the, the fees are the same whether you're an individual or a corporation or whatever, right? Yeah. No, we're expensive. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yes. And I just type, and I don't know the health. There's then there's health fees because there's regulation by the health department, which John doesn't really see. But they're the cheapest of all the county agencies. Not not for cannabis. Well, and not for our hazardous material. We had farmers complaining about our hazardous material because they charge on a fee. We were raising the rates for the refineries, so the health department didn't have something to pay. They just have gone to get. I can share with you without disclosing how much we pay for the license. We keep the bills over, might as well say, close to a half and millions. And then our startup costs, including all the regulatory costs, um, have been in hundreds of thousands. And then on top of that, we still have to pay federal taxes on something that is federal. And that's about 35%. In addition to the excise tax that we have to pay, and, and that's the other thing about medical. It used to be where medical um, customers didn't have to pay taxes. Now we have to pay taxes. So All of them. thank you for that. So what I'd like to do is see if maybe we could come to a consensus as a board regarding, let's say, an informational letter that we could uh, direct to Supervisor Joya. Um, sort of distilling community input. And sort of one thought I have is that 
uh, Dr. Nurse has sort of laid out that there are just real financial obstacles uh, for a small family owned business to enter into this market and compete. Mm -hmm. And so there could be, I think, we could recommend that the Board of Supervisors really look at equity uh, equity issues in RFP and in county imposed costs. I know you can't control federal costs or state costs, but at least county imposed costs to reduce the burden on uh, business owners like doctor nurse. Mm -hmm. So that would be one thing. Um, looking at building equity into um, the RFP process. Mm -hmm. And then I think the other thing we would encourage based on, you know, Mickey's comment and Tom's comment is really looking hard at these two businesses that currently either have um, invitations or have been promised a, a license and see if, you know, those spots can be opened up. Mm -hmm. You can write a letter summarizing that. Yeah, so, and yeah. what I'd like to what I'd like to propose is that I write a letter to the supervisor Joyce's office summarizing those two things, and if that would be a reasonable take home from this discussion that we had, um, yeah. yeah, move to. Um, I would just add a third thing that um, uh, that uh, I personally would support. Uh, uh, amending the previous law to allow for a new RFP, whether it's filling the two spots that exist or expanding. I actually think most of us in this room would probably support that. So, okay. so we wouldn't need to change the ordinance to do more RFPs. Right. We would need to change the ordinance that we wanted more than four. Right. Well, if you can't figure out how to open up those other two slots, well, yeah, 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 that's yeah. what I'm saying. I, then, I, got it. Do it. I got it. John, let me, John, you're still there? I'm here. One question. It may make sense to get solicit input from the Max on this issue uh, that you could have when you make your presentation to the board. That's just saying, are there any, is there any, ask Max if there's any input they want to provide on this issue. Yeah, we could, we could send that out to the Max to see if they have any input. The challenge yeah. is they will probably want a presentation like this one in order to understand it. So that could slow us down. But if they're willing to provide um, just their input on without, um, yeah, yeah, I'd be fine if we shared our letter with them. Yeah, and some and some <laughs> and, each, and, each, and, and some Macs are different. As they say, Alamo Mac and North Richmond Mac didn't want any of their community, for example. And so there's going to be different approaches. And some Macs don't have any place where it could happen. That's true. Like right. East Richmond Heights, there's nowhere. There's no yeah. zoning. There's no zoning. There's no zoning. Rolling <laughs> over to Terry Hills or Montau. But yes. Exactly. So just to bring this to the conclusion, what I'll do is add to that letter to consideration that Melinda brought up about if opening those two slots are in work, then encourage the board to consider new ordinance and open mm -hmm. a new RFP. Yeah, and there's I, one other issue really, really quick is that we're stuck because it's, it's like the county wants to, it's their way, period. So I can't move anywhere if I'm grandfathered in. I can't expand my services. And I'm on a month to month lease in fear of just complaining about the smallest thing. You know, so that's another issue. Let me take my license someplace else um, if they're willing to have me yeah. where I can do both medical and adult use. I'm willing to leave. Yeah. John, can you talk about the issue of transferring locations for grandfather use? That's not allowed. Yeah, but, but that is not yeah. allowed. Anywhere. I mean, it's a state law. State law anywhere. Anywhere in the state. Yeah, if, if, yeah, yeah. grandfather use, so it's not like we can change it. And I think to remember, if, if we violate our own planning laws, somebody's going to sue us. You know, and they're going to sue, sue the county. Yeah. Right. And say, wait a second, we went through the process, we're competing, and then you did not follow your own law and your own process, and you violate state law or local law, and we'll, we'll, sue, we'll sue you. I mean, that, so that's, we are always very. 
So we're not looking to see if we can vote on this letter. I um I'll I'll second your motion and then you write a letter. All in favor. Can I just have one other thing I feel weird about saying it, but considering you are having a hard time competing with smoke people, we went in there once and we offered us cannabis too. Hear that, hear that, John? Because you, John, don't think he's really because we gone. I mean, John, John knows I talked to him about that facility. Mickey, Mickey and Chris should be your undercover agents. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't walk in there. They did a job. It was very hard to be the legislation. For three years, so and we're. Uh, I'm noting it. We we've we. So I think I feel I'm, bad. Even you know, yeah. in the past, yeah. the yeah. Like, yeah. support. I think it's I was just going to say, comment noted, but we we have we have sent inspectors out there as has health. Okay. Yeah, I can take a look at that. So, we have to collect evidence. Yeah, so I, I feel bad that I, I also am in support of regular people. <laughs> and well, that's a fair competition. It's not my entity and it's not licensed like that. So, yeah. and, and that could be the basis to revoke their permit and shut them down. So I think we've had a really good discussion. Um, and I think we're probably at this point, we can move on to our next agenda items. So thank you. Look forward to the letter and we'll look at you know, when we can do our, you know, I think I would have liked to have seen I'll just say as an update sooner, but I respect because we've been focusing on the general plan and doing a lot of work and then during the pandemic, which is going to allow a lot of good things to happen. We're trying to get that off. And thank you for, for coming in in person yeah. to the meeting today. And thank you, Mr. Kopchick, for uh, being online for us. Thanks, John. Okay. Thank you for having me online. It helped with my, my family duties. The uh, next item on the agenda, uh, information item by uh, Matt. We have a Matt. Yeah, John. Yeah. Would you like yeah. to have your name on the back of the t-shirt? How much you can yeah. give us? Well, yeah, I know. <laughs> I'll, I'll do what I can do. What are your responses? They send it to you. It's in your email. I'll check. Okay. Okay. Check your email. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, 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 you sent this electronically, so we did. I did. Right. Yes. So it's probably the shade of numbers. Right. And yeah. We um and we have some more flyers. Yeah. Yeah. Those are on the project. He is. Yeah, so he's one of you, he's on a meetup. Yeah, I just met him today. Yeah, oh, cool. Well, anyway, so yeah. they like it, I support it. Well, you and so Halo always we, do we, we, we work well. <laughs> you can support one person and then you all kind of do the cha cha. You go this way and then right, you go right. that way, right. this <laughs> way. Um, I just want to say that um, we are very proud to announce that the absolutely legendary DJ Paige Hodel it is going to be our DJ for El Cerrante Pride. Um, to the sound of San Francisco from the 70s, 80s, and 90s. So I got to admit the older people don't know better. But trust me, when I say she can spin, she spins. Um, and other than that, uh, if you want to um, Put it on your calendar. It's September 22nd. There will be food. There will be fun. There will be a petting zoo for your children. So and this is cool because it's the first in history, right? Elsa Bronte. This is the first time Elsa Bronte has ever had a pride. So that anybody knows of. <laughs> um, so that's all. I have that. And then the farmer's market, as you all know, has moved to 10 to 2. And I have some of those flyers as well. And um, so they're they're now they're now open those hours instead of well before. And a question. Well, I just no, I have a statement. Can you tell the Rising Bakery to reduce the price of the loaves? They make the best bread ever in the world. And they sweat by nine dollars. It's fifteen bucks or fourteen bucks a loaf. No, it's not. Yeah.
I think, I think I always buy two so I can get it cheaper. Yeah, I well, I, <laughs> I am completely down for that. Um, I can't really tell them how to set their prices. Uh, yeah, I, As you know, you should just tell them. I, I did. I told them. But, they, said, but you know, they're paying San Francisco rent. Yeah. Their next door neighbor um, had a fire, which they they lost everything in their in their walk in. And so they're they're kind of digging themselves back out of the hole. I'm yeah. glad I'm glad you contributed to that. It's not it's, it's, it's bread. It's as, painful. It's <laughs> bread is a luxury. Well, we we did suggest to them at one point that it would not be hard for them to find a space here, but then I couldn't really tell them that the, the planning process and <laughs> building process for a kitchen is a beautiful process. I couldn't tell them that. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, yeah, there's Nelly, the grandfather. So I think, can we move to um, that was just my answer. Reports? Committee? Yeah. Oh, okay. Next cleanup is this Saturday, this Saturday cleanup, 7 to 12 at the library here in the parking lot. So please join us. And uh, Coastal Cleanup Day is uh, September 21st, and we're teaming up with spawners for that to clean up the streets and the creeks. And that's from 9 to 12. We're not going to do a, a big after program because the week before is the stroll, and we'll be out there giving out information. You're and it's become a pride celebration. And that party. is exactly why, that's exactly why we did not have another. A, a program in the so people can go the next day to the front. So we hope to be there and have hopefully have the table there. Oh, of course you can. Okay. The, the, the not so secret thing is booths are free. Oh, yeah, I know that, but I thought it was maybe limited. Um, well, we need to know you're coming. That's the main thing. That's something you can set up there and let people know you're there. Well, okay, what's that? What a booth prize. Oh, I think about that. I would focus on the, the troll. Well, that too. Well, yeah. that too. Well, and then hit them up to the notes. What is the date? Uh, the following weekend, the 22nd. Oh, okay. Yeah, we have the table there. And it does not cost you anything. And I, I have a compassionate care program too that we could probably mm -hmm. up where I can provide low cost for two products to those who qualify for my compassionate care. Well, well, let's describe all that to everybody. You can't, you can't actually have any product in the park. Yeah. Um, but, oh, no, but you can, but you can't. Yeah, but you can be there just to, just to, just to advertise and and explain to people what we've learned, which is that you're very different than the artistry. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's a good thing, right? <laughs> no, it's totally a good thing. We want that. And so, yeah, you have to have a have, have a boot. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, no cost. Okay. Thank you. Maybe. Max, you have something to No, I just Agenda items for upcoming SMAC meetings. I'd like to suggest, and I'll, I'll send you an email about this, Ronnie, that we reach out to Matt Pulse of the Contra Costa Senior Legal Aid. And maybe have him come in and give a, or give a talk about these legal aid services for for seniors that the county has. So you know we have a lot of uh, seniors who have a hard time, you know, getting access to the legal system because of both uh, limited economic means as well as sort of language barriers. Because we have a lot of non you know non English speakers here. So this agency is specifically set up for them, and it would just be nice for folks to hear about it and maybe be able to tell whoever they know who might need it that this opportunity exists. So I think it might be worthwhile to have him on the agenda. What do you think? Yep. Seems yeah. reasonable. Yeah. Sure. <clears throat> Good luck. Yeah. Uh, Free lawyers. 
I'm I'm all for free lawyers. Right. Um, <laughs> I don't think you should. I don't think you should. I could be like, make a final comment earlier in the agenda. People who don't have, who have none of the time can get here and have something to say without going to the whole meeting. I'm, I I like people hitting the whole meeting, but I just want that spot where they're talking forward and for the convenience of people like this. What do people think about this? We could, 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 all right, so um, any other agenda items that anybody suggests? In that case, we can go to public comment. I think you had one. I, well, I'm just. I'm, Thank you for your patience. <laughs> I just having a problem with the whole development that was going on. Just, they're just, there's so many new places like just popping up out of thin air. <laughs> really, I mean, well, what is it? Where? Like, where? like, like, um, on eight, across from AP and Lakers, there's like a million apartments, I mean, like a, a thousand apartments. They're, they're empty. I'm like, they went up overnight. And then there's like another, huh? another place. Yeah. yeah. And there, like, I think it's 150 um, addresses, and you can have a township. Just saying. What? Uh, wait, uh, whoa, wait a minute. Back, back to, where, do you, where are all these apartments? Like, like when you go down AP and Way, when you go down, when you're going towards Canal. And you, it, the, there's the Indian liquors right there on the corner. Eagles across the street, like in between there and the Gables, there's like a thousand apartments. They, they're huh? four stories of apartments. It's huge. It's a huge, huge, huge. In all or yeah, it's no, it's right. on top of We're already congested yeah. here. That's Penal. That's Penal. Right. Right. But that's that's Penal. That's the start of it. But place. that's not us. Okay, but then there's more development that, that's happening, like the. the the old hotel over there, like where Church Chad used to be, and then you can elevate the town. Well, we just moved and, from one place to a different one on the, on the damn road. Okay. Because we lost the brick now. So they went, and okay, bar, we'll get it. Bar, we'll get it a bigger place. The Ed Bar thing is, is like there's, they're, they're going to level the place and they're going to build condos. In, in well, we don't know anything about that. Okay. That's a rumor. Well, yes. there was we yeah, heard it yeah. sold, but we have not seen a development plan of any sort. There was there was there was there was worker trucks on the creek from from Edge Bar today all the way to AP and Way. I mean, there was crews like on the creek and, and doing some yeah, and, and, and I was I was in your backyard actually early. Well, they weren't doing development. No, they were they were trimming and they were they were they were cleaning, they were cleaning up, the, up the creek, right, the right side of the road. They were right. They were making it real pretty, but it was also running the animals like away from the creek. They were they were they were like running up out of. There was like a siren I heard today, and I heard coyote puppies like like they're moving them. I'm like, uh oh, <laughs> it's just kind of uh, where do they have to go? Thank okay. You. okay. Um, any other? I have. Um, I I wanted to um. Thank you. Everybody. Um, I I. Uh, spoke with Ronnie a couple of times um, because I have a charter school that moved into my neighborhood. I'm in, I'm not in El Sobrani. I'm in Terra Hills, unincorporated San Paolo. But the reason I'm here tonight is because I understand that you guys have proposed a noise ordinance that could mm -hmm. pass by the end of the year. Um, and this charter school that's like a block and a half from me, I've had constant issues with them outside on the PA system every single day. No, no. So that the it's not that you're in Terra Hills and the facility is in no. an unincorporated area. No, there's no Elsa Brandy involved here. It's all Terra Hills, San Pablo unincorporated county. Um, but we would be included in this yeah, or, yeah so that's why I'm here. Oh, good. To join the fight. Yes. Yeah. So, so the charter school, like they do morning prep rallies every single morning at 8:15, where they get on the PA system. Yeah. This charter school was originally a elementary school for 400 students in our neighborhood. They now have almost a thousand students at this school. They built on, and virtually all the students are driven in. So there's all kinds of issues. But the reason I'm here today is about this noise ordinance. 
um, because they not only do the daily morning things every single day, um, they also do events sometimes yeah. where they just do like two hours of music um, over the loud gigs. I, I live a block and a half away and I work from home and I can hear what songs they're playing. I can say, hey Siri, what song is this? And it'll be, it'll be, you know, you can identify it. it'll be Lil Nas X, whatever, you know, and, or, uh, you know, just <laughs> on and on. And so, and I know, I mean, I've gone up there, I've tried to work with them for like two years. They got these panels to put up, like to help reduce the sound that comes out. But still, it's just a constant pro. But the sure. thing is, I have, I have their emails, I have their phone numbers, and I have their texts. And I, communicating with them so many times. They might turn it down that time, but the next day, it's right back up. So I have a question. I believe that there is a current countywide ordinance that's not, so what we were, what right. we had to have to do with extending it to like people who had nighttime events mm -hmm. and so it was making not private parties, but there is an existing sort of construction noise, industrial noise, nuisance ordinance and what i'm wondering is whether the noise that this nearby school is making might fall under that i don't know for sure but i have made you know you talk to the have you yeah I, um i have made reports with the sheriff's office and they told me that well, the sheriff it, it, well, so, sheriff's, not, what, so i think maybe it would be division department uh, of conservation it's and not enforcement, no, code enforcement. enforcement so um, it's a place that's called enforcement. Yeah, and and, and time. So you, what you can do is make a complaint to code enforcement. I think maybe Ronnie can give you the contact yeah. contact information because that might be considered as like industrial noise. Mm -hmm. Yes, it could be. Then, so you may have an existing law that you know, works that will work there. Yeah. So it'd be good to uh, investigate that. Okay, I'll do that. But the sheriffs, we, should, we want to beef our ordinance up so the sheriffs are more empowered. So they have, but they don't really have that. But code enforcement has other laws. They have they have zoning permits. But so, and this school, if it's gone from four hundred to a thousand students, then that's a zoning problem. Maybe. I mean, I would talk to code enforcement. Uh, so they might be on top of it. If the whole county is going to have these, uh, uh, eat the max from appropriate areas, having this group, then you should contact the San Pablo. Whoever's in control of that unincorporated area where you are, I thought there's a map. I, I talked to Ronnie, he said there isn't one right now. You know, there's no map for, uh, for Terra Hills or Rolling Wood or Mont Salvin. Which is what so so maybe it's it's for the uh, next to the next to the next to the next but it's a fancy live ordinance. We have a perfect chair. We have a perfect chair. Like, my brain doesn't work like ordinances and stuff. So I don't know. But we don't know. So, so yeah. can I ask President Ronnie then? What does that mean in terms of? No, it's for the whole county, but uh, they're only looking for input from Max and not looking for general county input. No, I mean, it was so, but, you can join that. it's going, it's not necessarily for Max, it's for all the unincorporated areas within the county. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that. and if he says that he's like, God, <laughs> so. so he should go on an HD under the county. Yeah, 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 I, I, I would definitely do that. Yeah, yeah, sure. Go for it. Um, and, and then on back to your ordinance. So will that um is the way it's currently proposed, will that we don't include... know. We have to give this no proposal. Yeah. Oh, if we're waiting to see it, a proposal. It would cover all, all of the unincorporated, unincorporated areas of the county. So it wouldn't cover the cities in the county, mm -hmm. but it would cover the unincorporated areas. And will it cover like regardless of time of day? I mean, so, we don't know. Here's one other real, real quick little tidbit like, of what we get in our neighborhood sometimes. Not like not like the school thing, which is almost like five days a week, but this is more like an occasional big party. One yeah. time we literally had one that started at four o'clock in the afternoon. By six o'clock, I called the sheriff. I told him it was two to three houses down from us mm -hmm. because that's how close it sounded. And then they didn't, they said they didn't have, yeah, they couldn't right. really have teeth, but they'd go out and make a courtesy knock, you know? Mm -hmm. So a couple hours later, it was still going strong. So I went out 
and or actually no my husband went out and he's like i'm gonna go find out exactly which house which address so we can call back right he comes back he's like i have no idea where it is he goes i gotta get in my car and i'll be back well, and that is the sound in this valley is yeah. real funky. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, we have hills, Terra Hills. It was what six to eight blocks away. Yeah, oh, nice. Fly, sometimes that happens. Fly me in the backyard. So well, that would definitely be covered because that has to be a lot of volume. It was. I mean, and there were a bunch of people on next for saying they had also reported it, but they they didn't shut it down. They didn't have to shut it down until 10 p.m. Yeah. So a lot of the materials that we discussed. Um, sort of the lead up to this county starting this process were some of the existing ordinances. And those generally have to do with not so much daytime as evening nighttime parties. Nighttime parties. So people basically, you know, either they you know, have kids who've gone to bed or they need to get up early the next day and there's this raging party going on. Mm -hmm. So it was meant to address that. If it looks like you're bringing up something which is like daytime excessive noise that hinders people who work from home, for example, right? You just even want to yeah. be home watching TV right. and not so, in the party. So yeah. that, that's why you, your input would be really valuable. Well, maybe the person who's dying of cancer had to listen to that. Anything. That is making Anything. me sad. <laughs> so, uh, so, so, so basically, so basically, there's this questionnaire where you can give your input to the county yeah. and witness. And so that seems like a data point that we kind of probably haven't discussed. discussed. So we it's probably amazing. There's something we haven't discussed about noise. <laughs> you have to jump. <laughs> Unless there are. But you're not too late. You another... keep right in the process. I, I, we haven't done it yet. I'm, uh -oh. We're just trying. I'll be going, Harry. Uh, my name is Harry Lehman. I'm uh, on the uh, West County Wastewater District Board of Directors. My term is up uh, in at the end of this year, and so I applied to run for office. And it turns out no one was brave enough to go against me, so I'm going to be for the next four years your board member. Yeah. And our district covers your area. So uh, we can keep your area from smelling bad. Everybody has to say that. We can keep it all the time. He asked me if I'll get some shit done. Well, no, one's, no one's running against Harry because of this formidable opposition. That's about the machine. Yeah. Uh, uh, you, you should announce what you told me at the last meeting, which is that rates are going to go down for the people who are doing new construction. Oh. I, I I think that yeah well I think they the best we, news I've heard in years <laughs> we have we evaluated our new uh, hookup problem but that's not going to affect Which, us. Yeah. Yeah. Ours is there. in the East Bay and so uh, <laughs> I want to finish up by saying that the district has will complete a clean and green project that uh, will out we will power. Our uh, our plant uh, with your own food, one hundred percent with recovered <laughs> energy from, food to power. from your food, food to power. and uh, we will be saving us uh, two million dollars a month. Wow. wow! I still haven't been to the East Bay Mud Food to Power Tour. Is that as cool as I think it is? Well. You could come to ours. You you give me a poop to power. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to listen to this note. <laughs> I'd like to say uh, I'd like to ask if there are any if there are no further um, public okay. comments, if we could go ahead and adjourn. It's not a